who's senior fellow at the Shalom Hartman Institute in Jerusalem. He's an expert on Israeli and Middle Eastern affairs, and he is author of a book that we're just very excited to talk to him about. It's called titled Like Dreamers, the story of the Israeli paratroopers who reunited Jerusalem and divided a nation. Yossi, welcome to the program. Well, thank you. It's wonderful to be with you. Are, uh, you, are you in Jerusalem today, or where are you? Uh, no, no, I'm on, a, I'm on an American book tour. Uh, every day, another city. <laughs> so, so today, I think today I think I'm in New York. <laughs> are you? Th- oh, you're one of those deals, huh? It really is. You don't know exactly where, what hotel room you just came out of, what city you're in. Okay, I got sometimes you. it's very frightening. Yeah, I uh, Yossi, this is a, a, a fascinating look at modern Israel uh, and what it took to uh, make it a nation and to keep it alive in the face of uh, war and the attempts to drive the Jewish people into the Mediterranean Sea. And yet it's also a book, as the, uh, the subtitle says, about how those who helped keep Israel alive uh, have also had a different perspective on how Israel should operate and what Israeli values should be. Why don't you give us a, a brief overview of why you thought this book was important, and uh, maybe some of the details of it. Well, I think you've, you've summed it up very well. Um, on the one hand, it's a book about the heroism of Israel. Uh, I chose seven paratroopers who fought in Jerusalem in 1967. These were the men who were at the Western Wall when it was liberated on that fateful morning of June 7, 1967. Uh, and uh, these seven men for me were emblematic of of the history of Israel and I tell the story of Israel through these seven lives. What happened to the men who uh, who fought in the Battle of Jerusalem? And and these are men who who went on to fight together in the Yom Kippur War. Do you, do you, there's a famous story of how General uh, at that time General uh, Arik Sharon led the crossing of the Suez Canal during the Yom Kippur War and took the, took the fighting onto the Egyptian side, surrounded the Egyptian armies, and won the war. Well, it turns out these were the same guys who had fought in the battle for Jerusalem, who basically won the Yom Kippur War. So these are, these are the heroes of Israel, these men. And, and they fought some of them together in three, four, even five wars. And what, what, what I found so moving at the same time about this story is that these friends, these comrades in arms, this, this band of Israeli brothers uh, who defended the country repeatedly, many of them were wounded, uh, one lost a son, uh, how, how in the course of Israel's history they, they so deeply devoted themselves to defending the country and yet also deeply disagreed about which way Israel should go. So I've got the religious paratroopers and the secular paratroopers, the right who believed very strongly in, in settling the, the biblical West Bank, and the left who believed in uh, trying to reach a two-state solution with the Palestinians. And what, what's so moving for me as an Israeli is that these are men who shared the same tent, you know, in some ways symbolically, and sometimes literally, the same tent. They were friends for decades. They went to each other's family family events, and yet they were bitter political rivals. And I think that's something that's been lost in this country, uh, in, in the United States, because you no longer have, have, have a situation where everyone serves their country together in, in uniform. And I think something gets lost in the fabric of society, and we still have that in Israel. So for all the bitterness, for all of the, the and, and, you know, our, our arguments can get very bitter. But at the end of the day, we all show up again for reserve duty, and we're all back in the same tent. Hmm. You know, uh, let me ask you a question that's, that's broader, and then, of course, we want to come back to your book. And we're talking to uh, Yossi Klein Halevi who is a senior fellow at the Shalom Hartman Institute in Jerusalem. Uh, he's an expert on Israeli and Middle Eastern affairs, has written the book Like Dreamers, the story of the Israeli paratroopers who un- reunited Jerusalem and divided a nation. He is currently in the United States on a book tour. But um, 
uh, before we come back to the book, let me just ask you a broader question because I, I, I found this fascinating that these guys who shared a tent and the, and the photo on the front cover is is just awesome. I mean, it looks like Band of Brothers, so uh, great right. you know props to the, the folks who took care of that for this book. Let me ask you this. Do you think it is uh, just the natural state of affairs when you have freedom, when you have a, a, a democratic or Republican form of government where people are free to, to have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, all those kinds of things. Do you think it's just normal that, that a country like that will, uh, will have what we call conservative and liberal? Because I just think it's fascinating that the same kind of dichotomy happens in Israel as happened in the United States. Is that just what happens when people are free to, to speak their minds? Yeah, I, I, I think that that is inevitable, and and in Israel, the the you know all the issues that we face, in one way or another, are life and death. And Israeli politics are different from political arguments. I'd say almost anywhere else, because in Israel, if you if you make a big mistake, it could, God forbid, be fatal. And and that's always in the back of people's minds. You know that, and that we we have this sense. I think this is true for most Israelis. I'm, 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 I'm a religious man, but I think it's also true for many secular Israelis. And that is that, that we feel that we're custodians of, uh, of the fulfillment of a 2,000-year-old dream, of, of the return of, of the Jewish people home. And it's such an extraordinary story. There's nothing like this story in, in, in history of a people that loses its ancient land and keeps faith with its with its land, holds on to that memory, believes it will return, and then 2,000 years later, under the most uh, horrific circumstances, manages to to reestablish itself. And and so my generation of Israelis feels a sense of of awe and and trepidation in in. in as custodians of this dream, what if we what if we get it wrong? There's there are so many pitfalls. There's so many dangers facing Israel in every direction, and and so what I tried to do in this book was step aside for a moment and let all of these men speak. And so the book moves in and out of of their perspectives, and it lets them tell their story. And I feel that by 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 telling the story of, of Israel's internal arguments through the paratroopers who gave us our, our greatest victory, the reunification of Jerusalem. Uh, I, I, I feel that I'm, I'm, I'm giving these men the, the honor that they deserve, and, and the challenge to the reader is just listen to all of them. This is what the Israeli internal conversation has sounded like for 40 years. These are our dilemmas. And whatever side you're on in this in this divide, at least at least listen to to the to the range of what our conversation is like. The uh, book is called Like Dreamers. It's the story of the Israeli paratroopers who reunited Jerusalem and divided a nation. Yossi Klein Halevi is our guest. Uh, he's in the USA. He uh, resides in Jerusalem. He is the uh, senior fellow at the Shalom Hartman Institute in Jerusalem. What do you guys do there at the Institute? Well, we do uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> Jewish education. Uh, we, we bring uh, uh, Jewish values, uh, the holidays. We do Jewish curriculum, in, uh, especially for secular Israeli schools, which are increasingly open in a way that they weren't in the past to trying to understand uh, Judaism. So that's a positive change that's been happening in Israeli society. I was listening to your conversation just before I came on uh, about uh, what's happening in the American public space. And, you know, in Israel, uh, it's inconceivable to imagine a, our public space without religion. And that goes, it, it goes for Judaism, Christianity, and also Islam. You have, you have religion very much a part of our public space. And uh, I, I just couldn't imagine living in a society where that's, mm. where that's not, you know, not possible. A lot, of, y'all see, a lot of Americans maybe even don't understand uh, 
the freedom that exists in Israel as compared to other Middle Eastern, mostly Islamic dominated nations. <clears throat> I mean, Israel is, seems like constantly beat up by the United Nations and, you know, a violator of, of, uh, of you know, international people, law uh, and all that. Yeah, it's just like over and well, over again. Well, you know, it's even, it's even worse than that. Israel is condemned at the UN more often than all other countries combined. Well, they have breakfast combined. and then they condemn Israel. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's what they right. do that's right. every day. Well, then let, let me ask you. Well, that didn't finish here. Oh, go I'm ahead. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. And it, drive, it drives Israelis crazy. Yeah. Well, Yossi, let me ask you this. And this is in the book. And I, 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 was, I thought about this. Uh, Israel's dream has been to be a nation among nations, just a normal nation among other nations. Why does that seem so impossible? Well, I mean, why, why, and we've talked about this on this program before, why is it that Israel is the nation that, the, that delegates to the United Nations have breakfast and say, okay, now what are we going to condemn them for today? I mean, why, well, why yeah. is it seemingly impossible for Israel just to take its place as one of the normal nations uh, among the other nations of the earth? Well, you know, the, the, the dream of, of Zionism, uh, the, the, the dream of, of the return of the Jews home, was partly a dream of, of helping the Jews free themselves from anti-Semitism. And, and the idea was that the Jews would just become a normal nation and, and would stop being a minority everywhere, and, and that would normalize Jewish reality. But what's happened is that now Israel has become the target of anti-Semitism. So that, that the, the, and this is a terrible irony for, for Jews, is that the, the, the attempt to normalize us has, has backfired. And, uh, you know, there's, um, there's, there's this, this terrible saying in Israel, which is that the, the, the state of the Jews has become the Jew of the states. And uh, we, are, we are the state that, that mo most of the international community refuses to, to accept as normal. And we're the only country in the world that, that, you know, when we sit down to negotiate peace with our neighbors, we are expected to offer... Uh, hard concessions, territory, and what, we're, and, what we, and what we get in return, if we get that at all, is recognition of our right to exist. In any other negotiating process, anywhere in the world, I don't care if it's between two lawyers or two countries, the starting point is you and I both exist and we both have the right to exist. Mm -hmm. It's only Israel that's negotiating away hard-won assets and that we won in, 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 in wars of defense over the years for, uh, for, for, the, for the mere right to exist. The book you've written, is, again, is called Like Dreamers, the story of the Israeli paratroopers who reunited Jerusalem and divided a nation. Uh, is there, do you have a website for the book, or how, how can people get a copy? Uh, either through Amazon, uh, and uh, that's probably the best way. Okay, uh, Yasi Klein, K L E I N, uh, uh, and his last name, our guest, is spelled H A L E V I. That's it. And uh, let me ask you this what is the feeling on the ground um, in, in Israel now and, and the, uh, the relationship with the United States? Because we have always, you know, been joined together, that is, the U.S. and Israel. Uh, had differences, obviously, uh, but uh, been joined together, uh, you know, in in, in, in uh, as allies, in, in, as allies, and in and in, in really, as I mentioned earlier, the way that uh, they have a different form of government, but it's a very modern Western style society for the most part. Um, uh, so, how? But you know, with President Obama and the contentiousness that that he's had with. Uh, Israeli government, particularly with Benjamin Netanyahu, how's that? How, what's the feeling over there, generally? Well, look, you know, they just took a poll asking Israelis about uh, the deal with Iran, and the poll showed two things. One is that the overwhelming majority of Israelis believe that America is our best friend, without exception. 
And the second is that a strong majority of Israelis believe that this administration will not stop Iran from going nuclear. So I think that there is a, um, there's, there's a wise distinction in the minds of Israelis 